Welcome to the KCSC Paper 2 of 2019, Physics, Paper 2 of the year 2019. And we go straight to the first question. What are, are we told in the first question? Let's look at it. We are told that the figure shows, the figure 1 shows two plane mirrors inclined at an angle of 120 degrees to each other. A ray of light makes an angle of 40 degrees with the first mirror. By completing the ray diagram, determine the angle of reflection on the second mirror. So when you study that diagram, we can be able to see this incident ray here, strikes the mirror at this point. We should realize that what we've been given here is the angle that the ray makes with the mirror. Don't be deceived by that. That is not the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence is defined as the angle between the normal at the point of incidence and the incident ray. And this line here, since it makes 90 degrees with the mirror, it must be in the normal. And you can see it is drawn at the point of incidence. So this angle here is the angle of incidence. However, what happens to the ray? The ray, as soon as it strikes the mirror at this point, it gets reflected and it will move this way. And it will obey the laws of reflection. And this is how it looks like. So we need to determine this angle here as the angle of incidence so that we can use the first law of reflection which states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. How do we define the angle of incidence? The angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray, which in this case is this ray here, and the normal. So this angle here is 50 degrees. How do I get 50 degrees? I have to realize that by normal, we mean this line here, which is drawn at the point of incidence and referred to as the normal, it is referred to as a normal because it makes 90 degrees with the mirror. With the mirror. So, because the whole of this angle is 90 degrees, if I subtract 40 from 90 degrees, I get 50 degrees. And let's indicate those, uh, those angles on the diagram. So, it is important to indicate these angles on the diagram because uh, this will help us to follow or to trace the direction in which this ray is moving. So we have already determined that this angle here, which is the angle of incidence, should be 50 degrees. And then we use the first law of reflection, which says that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So this is the angle of reflection, and it should also be 50 degrees. That means that this must also be 40 degrees just by, by following the same argument. So this ray will travel like this, come and strike the mirror at this point, and again get reflected. This ray happens to be the incident ray as far as the second mirror is concerned, but it is the reflected ray as far as the first mirror was concerned. So notice that an, a reflected ray can become an incident ray depending on whether it is leaving the mirror or approaching the mirror. That ray which bounces off the surface after reflection, it's called the reflected ray. The mirror which approaches the surface is called the incident ray. So, let's see. How much is this angle of incidence at this point? Notice that we do not know that angle, but we can determine it if we know this angle. Now, how do we know this angle? If we look at this shape here, it is a triangle. We've got to bear in mind that the total of the angles, the sum of the angles in a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. That is why knowing this angle is important so that when we add it to, onto this one, we get 160 degrees. We subtract 160 from 180 and we get this angle here to be 20 degrees. Again, remember this 20 degrees is not the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence is actually 70 degrees. How, again, how do I get that? 
I have to realize that the normal makes 90 degrees with the mirror and therefore just by subtracting 20 degrees I should be able to get this angle here which happens to be the angle of incidence. And once I get the angle of incidence I should know that this is the angle of reflection which is what actually the, the question asks us to determine the angle of reflection at the second mirror. Determine the angle of reflection on the second mirror. So one of the marks definitely goes here. When you identify that angle and indicate it on the diagram, it's not enough to calculate it elsewhere and say that the angle of reflection is this much if you have not indicated where that angle of reflection is found on the diagram because this is also 70 degrees. But what is the examiner looking for? He's looking for the angle of reflection, this one here, on the second mirror because there is also an angle of reflection on the first mirror. So read the question carefully. So what are the two concepts that are required in this, in this kind of uh, question? First of all, this question comes from a reflection of light at plane surfaces. And when you study reflection of light at plane surfaces, we come up with the two laws of reflection. Number one, it states that the, ang the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Before you can state that law, you need to define the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. For you to do that, you need to identify the two important rays in reflection. There is this ray which approaches the mirror, which comes towards the mirror before it bounces off the mirror. This ray which comes towards the mirror and strikes the mirror at this point, it's called the incident ray. The point where that incident ray strikes the mirror is referred to as the point of incidence. At the point of incidence, we usually draw a line. And in this question, this line has been drawn for you. It had already been drawn for you, so you don't have to struggle drawing it. This line, which is drawn at the point of incidence, is not a ray. It's drawn in such a way that it makes 90 degrees with the mirror. Here, this is 90 degrees, the whole of this angle. And that 90 degrees helped us to identify this angle here. I'm going to explain that angle in a minute. But remember, we've got the incident ray, which is the ray which approaches the mirror. The, the ray which bounces off the mirror is referred to as the reflected ray. At the point of incidence, we draw the normal. That normal helps us to identify the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. The angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. This angle here. It follows that the angle of reflection is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. That's where this 50 and this 50 that's why this is 50 degrees and this is 50 degrees because we are using the first law of reflection. Don't get confused when they give you this angle here. This angle, many students think that this angle is the angle of incidence. It is not. It is simply an angle that the incident ray makes with the mirror. Remember that is not the incident it is not the angle of incident. The angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. The incident ray and the normal. That is the angle of incidence. While the angle of reflection is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. The other thing is this. You've been asked to complete the ray diagram. This one here. It is important that when you complete this ray diagram, you show arrows. A ray diagram is never complete if arrows have not been included. So remember to show the arrows because it shows the direction of travel of the ray or light energy. In which direction is it moving? Secondly, it helps you to identify the incident, the angle of incidence 
and the angle of reflection because you will have identified the ray which approaches the mirror and named it the incident ray, the ray which leaves the mirror and name it the reflected ray. You will find something striking here. When it comes to the second mirror, the reflected ray coming from the first mirror is now referred to as the incident ray. So by definition, by definition, the incident ray is that ray which approaches the mirror or comes towards the mirror. And then it gets reflected at a special point we call the point of incidence where we draw the normal and so forth. The second law of reflection states that the incident ray, the normal at the point of incidence, and remember the normal at the point of incidence is not a ray. So don't get carried away like some students do. They say something like this, the incident ray, the normal ray, and the reflected ray, all of them lie in the same plane. The moment you call the normal a ray, you've lost that point. So remember to state it like this, the incident ray, the normal at the point of incidence, and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. That is how you state that. And those are the most important concepts as far as a reflection at plane surfaces is concerned. And you can see how I've been able to use the first law of reflection to answer this question. Let's go to question two.